This is the installation procedure for an ID seal groove Genesis hydraulic rotary manifold. The first step after disassembling the manifold, the housing, spool, keeper plate, and any other bolts or necessary items need to be washed and cleaned thoroughly. Typically, Greg here will be using a microfiber towel with either xylene or an acetone to clean all grooves out. Ensuring that the seal grooves are cleaned thoroughly, you may want to use a tool to get deep into the groove and to clean the seal grooves out adequately before installation. And this next step Greg is going to demonstrate how to install the square cut expander rings or the loaders for each seal. So he's taken the seal in his hand, make sure that the seal is flat, he will insert it into the seal groove, making sure that the expander ring does not twist at all as he's installing it. So you can install it from bottom to top or top to bottom and then it pops in as shown here. After concluding with the installation of square cut expander ring, we are now going to show you uh, the seal installation. So Greg will uh, carefully, keeping the uh, seal flat against the flat portion of the square cut expander ring, work the seal all the way, again, top to bottom or bottom to top, whatever you prefer. For purposes of demonstration, we're going from bottom to top. You will note that Greg is pointing that now there is a portion of the seal that is kind of buckled. This is typical, and you have to be very careful during this procedure not to mar the seal. So what Greg is using here is a flat but not sharp tool, in this case it's a screwdriver, to push the face of the seal into the groove carefully and now he's just working his hand in to get the memory back of the seal. Ready? Yep. Uh, the next step um, Greg is going to demonstrate is the installation of the crown seal. There's a crown seal on each end of these units. Uh, this crown seal already has a loader in it. You can see the black loader in this case uh, in the lipped uh, crown seal. So like the seal installation, Greg's going to work from the bottom up and all the way around the top. And then we're going to have the same type of issue we had with the seal. You're going to have some extra seal that will bind up a little bit and Greg will work it in with his hands and then utilize a tool working the sides, working the side of the crown seal instead of the face of the crown seal into the groove. So just ensure that the sides are worked in with the tool, not the face of the uh, crown seal, and then pop it in with your hand uh, naturally. It goes pretty quickly uh, once you do get the hang of it. Now uh, Greg has installed all the seals and before uh, we go to the next step, he's going to prep the idea of the housing for the spool installation. So in this case, what uh, Greg likes to use is a spray bottle of uh, obviously clean hydraulic oil or fluid. The same fluid, if possible, that you'll be using uh, in the Genesis equipment. So he'll spray it and then using his hand ensure that all the seals are fully lubricated before we install the spool. Prior to installing the um, spool, Greg has to install the wiper seal on, on the first edge. So in this, this wiper seal has or has contained a O-ring face. When you install this wiper seal, ensure that the O-ring face is facing outward. Now what Greg will do is carefully work and twist the wiper seal in place, keeping the O-ring, again, maintain the O-ring, to the outside of the groove. And he'll work it all the way around. Now like most seals that we've illustrated before, you will have a slight bubble on the end. Once you're ready to push it in, just use the tool on the face just below the O-ring to kind of guide it into the groove. And now you have a nice lip 
on the outside, pressing to the outside to prevent any dirt or contaminants from going into the unit. The next procedure Greg will uh, demonstrate is uh, filling the bearing groove with a bead of synthetic high temperature grease. Uh, in this case he's using about four to five pumps all the way around the bearing groove. Once this spool is installed this groove actually creates a race of which we will show you how to install the bearings in a, in a minute. What he'll do is use his finger to fill the groove completely. And that groove just needs to be completely filled on a diagonal basis. You'll see it as he's wiping it off. Two things to ensure here is wipe off the top side of any excess grease and the ID. It's very important that the ID be wiped completely clean and what this does is uh, it's, it's ensuring that we don't get any grease on the ID of the seals. Okay, this is the uh, demonstration of pressing the spool into the housing. Uh, what Greg has done to prep the spool is he's evenly placed it uh, on, on the uh, appropriate end of the housing and you'll have to check your drawing to ensure that you're putting the head end of the spool in correctly on the correct side of the housing. But he set it in, it has to be even. What you need to ensure here is as you're pressing the spool into the housing, you're somewhat holding or balancing the top end or the head end of the spool in so that the spool doesn't um, pass by each seal quickly. You want them to pass the seals in a gentle, gent, gentle manner as Greg is doing here and pressing it in slowly so that not to uh, mar or chip any of the seals during installation. Okay, this next procedure is the bearing installation. These are bearing pins and you have a circular side on one side and then you have your flat around side that goes around the perimeter of the bearing. So Greg here is utilizing a small pick to drop the bearings in side by side. Again, the circular part must stand up and should clear the housing as it, as it drops into each groove. The bearing will stick up just slightly above the housing itself and that, that's important that that happens. Don't be alarmed that they are sticking out. They're supposed to stick out just a tad and if you get it to roll like that one did, uh, a pick will easily be able to pull it out and then turn it side by side, all the way around. Uh, there will be extra bearings in your bearing kit, so don't be alarmed if you have a couple of bearings, but the key here is to make sure that your bearing count is correct on both sides of the manifold. There's a little uh, tip we can give you to make sure that you have all your bearings in. What, what Greg will do here is utilize his pick or a tool and pull all the bearings in one direction and what that will do is shore up any spaces that you may have and then it will also provide you with that one last space to pop that one last bearing in. After the bearings are in place you need to run a simple bead of grease all the way around the tops of the bearings to ensure that you fill in all the spaces between the bearings with your synthetic grease. After he installs the grease all the way around, Greg will utilize a rag to clean up the face of the housing as well as the face of the spool from any excess grease before he presses in the rest of the spool. wipe the face of the housing and then he'll get the face of the spool as well. Surface of the spool. Make sure there isn't any excess grease before he uh, presses it in. The last portion of the spool installation now, uh, Greg has put some spacers below the housing so that as you push the spool all the way into the other side, the spool 
and has room to meet the flat end of the housing. What Greg has done is now flip the manifold on the head end of the spool so he can reach the opposite end of the housing. So the next step is to install the last wiper seal. Again, O-ring out, twisting it so that the O-ring is facing out all the way around, working it in with his hands gently and popped into place. Again, you should have a lip that runs the outside or the radius of that uh, wiper seal. Now what he's doing is applying a thin bead of grease, synthetic grease again, to the race that's now created between the spool and the housing, just like it was created on that first installation for the bearings. Is this or not? Uh, again, on, just like the prior bearing installation, Greg wants to uh, move it to uh, eliminate, move the bearings to eliminate any undue space and then install the last bearing. He will then grease the spaces on the top and then our next and last procedure will be the keeper plate installation. Greg is now wiping off any excess grease around the bearing material and around the wiper seal. Next he'll install, he is currently installing the keeper plate. Matching up the bolt hole pattern, he will install, in this case these are half inch socketed cap screws. Applying red Loctite to each socketed cap screw and then turning in the socketed cap screws. The last step in the installation is the keeper plate installation. Greg is now uh, torquing. These are half inch socketed cap screws. Please check your spec if you have a different socketed cap screw size. And uh, the torque value here is 125 foot pounds for a half inch socketed cap screw of this size. Each of these half inch socketed cap screws do have a uh, lock washer installed on each one. And that is the end of our installation procedure.